What's up, Yugi nerds? It's your boy Reaper here, and today I am joined with my boy Smog. Uh, welcome to Draw for Turn. Now, this is this Draw for Turn is gonna be a little bit different because I am able to actually have my guest here in person for once. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and just draw for turn and get right on into this interview. Um, so I'm just gonna start out by the primary question that I ask everybody: How did you discover Yu-Gi-Oh? Uh, probably like everybody my age was from the original anime. Oh, huh. good old Duelist Kingdom. <laughs> good old Duelist Kingdom Yu-Gi-Oh. I was probably like five or six. Five or six, <laughs> dude. Saturday morning cartoon. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Watching Pokemon Yu-Gi-Oh. Not Digimon. You didn't watch Digimon? Oh man. Absolutely not. I enjoyed Digimon. I'm a hard Pokemon stand when it comes to Digimon. Yeah. Well. <laughs> All right, um, so me and you have been buds for a while now. Yep. Me and you have been playing Yu-Gi-Oh! together for a while now. Yep. Um, so I, I, I've, I've been able to learn a few things uh, about you in, in the card game, but I don't know a whole lot. Um, I know that you competed in a YCS. I, I do know that much. Could you, could you give us a basic rundown of, of, of what went down? Like, what, what was it like competing in an in-person YCS? Well, it wasn't YCS. It was, a, it was just a regionals. Oh. Um, I've competed in a couple, but um, I think the one that you're specifically talking about, I actually had a, a feature match in on uh, Twitch, of all places, That's before awesome. Twitch was even really a thing. Um, I remember it pretty thoroughly. It was I was playing Harpy Ladies, of all things, right when... Uh, Harpy Channeler and Phantasmal Dragon and all that wave of support came in and um, I was playing against Bujins, I think. You played against Bujins? I did play with Harpies? Bujins, yep. Um, I'm pretty sure I won. I don't remember. It was <laughs> probably about 10 years ago. Jesus. But yeah, I was very nervous because I've never done anything like that. It was my first big tournament and I had to play on Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's better than my first big tournament. I went 0-3 with with Sky Strikers, so mm -hmm. I didn't even make it to the feature match. Yeah. These so. matches are completely random, so it's like, hey, you get to come up to the front. Yeah. And everybody's gonna look at you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I know that that you've like like you, you do play tournaments every now and then, like you play locals. Mm-hmm. Um, but I know that you've also, you know, that you took a break from Yu-Gi-Oh! And you, you told me that it was like the competitive aspect just got to be a little too much for you at one point. Is, is that, is that accurate or? Yeah, I just couldn't keep up at the time. Car decks were, you know, 500 plus dollars and I didn't have a job at the time. So I just quit the game altogether for a long time. I started playing back around um, the Endymion structure deck was the first thing I bought when I came back into the game. And that was fun for a while. Was it, was it really? Because mm -hmm. I remember, didn't you get the the uh, Salamangre structures too? Uh, at one point, yeah. It was one of the two. Yeah, you didn't, you didn't run it for very long. I know that. I know you didn't run either one of those very long. Good old pendulums. Yeah. That was a that was a fun deck to come back into the game too because I had no idea how to play it. <laughs> oh man, so what? Like, speaking of decks, you know, what is your favorite deck to run uh, right now? Um, I like my Dark Magician deck. You can probably see that up on this channel very soon. Actually, probably by the time this comes out, that deck profile has already been released. So if you guys would like to uh, to check it out if you haven't already, make sure you click the link. <laughs> down below or go check out the channel it'll be there um but yeah i've never really been in, interested in like any of the meta decks they're just boring and i'm a hipster so i like playing decks that nobody else plays no oh. <laughs> that's that's fair there are uh, meta decks are also really expensive so i can't i can't spend a hundred dollars on card pool oh i i completely agree if you check out like 90% of the deck profiles on this channel, they are built for your casual player. They are not built for meta because I can't afford those cards. I know there's a large, you know, 
like a large quantity of people out there who also cannot afford those cards, but they still mm -hmm. want to be in the game. So, I mean, I do my best to provide lists and profiles for people that can also join in on the fun. Just don't look at the Dark Magician deck profile, then, because that deck's expensive. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> that deck's yeah. expensive. Yeah. But, you know, it, it's one of those decks that, you know, if you're going to play it, there is there is some money involved. Obviously, with almost any deck that, that Yu-Gi-Oh! has to offer, you can play it on a budget scale, but you can also spend the money that you need to in order to make it more competitive and more meta. It just depends on the play style that you're looking for. Um... So, getting back, getting back to my boy Smog here. What is what is one of your favorite memories regarding Yu-Gi-Oh? Like, what's one of your favorite memories that you have playing the game? I wouldn't say it's my favorite, but just saying some of the earlier memories I have. Um, I used to play at my local Books a Million back oh, when they uh, God. played card games. Um, that was well, forever ago. That was forever ago. Um... And right about when I was about 13 or so, I, uh, about once a month, I would beg my mom to take me to Tuscaloosa, Alabama, uh, which is about an hour, an hour and a half away from here. And I would, uh, get her to take me to a place called Crimson Castle, oh. which I'm sure a lot of people in this area know. And, uh, I would compete in tournaments and my mom would have to wait for me for about four or five hours <laughs> she would get very upset at me because she would want to go home um, stuck surrounded by a bunch of nerds playing with cardboard yeah um but yeah um i also had a good friend when i was a kid um who we would he was like the only person i knew who played Yu Yu or liked Yu Yu. so yeah we're still friends today awesome man See, and that's another thing that, like, I, I I like about this series in particular and, you know, just in general about Yu-Gi-Oh! is the fact that, like, just like every community, you have, like, you have the negative crowd, but you also have the positive crowd. Like, this game has, like, brought people together and has, like, created bonds. Like, me and Ian here. Smog, Ian, whatever. Sorry his name dropped <laughs> either way like me and him have been really good buds for a handful of years now like i can't even think back how long ago that was it's been a while but you know one of the things like one of the the reoccurring things in our friendship is sitting down at a table and playing Yu-Gi-Oh. Mm -hmm. you know he, he he's the better player i'm not even gonna lie he has more wins than I do, but I will say I have gotten a few. You got a few. I got a few. I think the most recent one was Cubix. Yep. <laughs> he could he couldn't out the Crimson Nova. His deck wasn't prepared for it. Oh. But Yeah, I met a lot of friends through Yu Gi Oh and there some can be really nice, some can not be. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Like you, you have the, the people that'll sit down and play and you know, have like a decent conversation with you. And then you have the others that'll sit down and play and just, like, dog you the whole time. Like, why are you activating that? Like, uh, negate. You can't do that. Get that out of here. Like, I'm I'm saying it in a nice way. But there are people out there that'll just sit there and dog you every single play that you make. So. I do want to brag for a minute. So absolutely. Go ahead. To, uh, brag. Going back to uh, the Crimson Castle days. Whew. I, uh. I personally have met and know a Cody Angelop, who is a very renowned Yu-Gi-Oh player right now. So oh, that's awesome. Man. He probably doesn't remember me, but I remember him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, so out of out of the Yu-Gi-Oh card pool, I would like to ask you, what is one of your favorite cards in the entire game? My favorite cards? Yeah, your favorite the card. entire game? Yeah. Because I mean, um, uh, our boy Easy Walker asked me what my fa what my favorite was, uh -huh. Soggy the Dark Clown. Right. His was uh was it Sheba Warrior Taro? So are we talking about like Karibo levels of favorite card, from, like our spirit, from our spirit monster. Yeah, like I guess I guess well yeah, what's your spirit monster? Like what's the card that like you just like 
if you see it out in the wild, you know, like that that's one that's like, oh man, this card. Cool. Uh, when I was a kid, I thought my spirit monster was Night in Sorcerer. Night in Sorcerer? Nobody probably knows. It's like a a little rabbit guy. A little rabbit guy. He's a little rabbit guy. Nice. I used to love him. Let's throw a picture of it uh, right now. Oh, all right. But right now, uh, dude, I have no idea. <laughs> I have to go back to Dark Magician. Dark Magician? <laughs> Gotta stay with the class. Dude, okay, I, yeah, I will say, man, like, I remember when you told me that you, like, had sold all of your Yu Gi Oh stuff originally, mm -hmm. like, this last go around. I remember you saying that you sold everything but, like, your Dark Magician stuff. Yep. I, I have a little collection of Dark Magician cards. It's a pretty good, like, it's a pretty, pretty sweet collection, I gotta say. Thank you. <laughs> um, is there any questions that you would like to, to throw my way? I like, I like to leave, leave this very open-ended. I like to give the, the guest a chance to ask some questions. Or if you would just like to throw a topic out there. Either way is fine. Or you can tell me to, to shut up and we can move on. I got nothing right now. All right, man. All right. All right. All right, so I do have a question for you real quick. All right. Um, so you, you've you've been in the game for a long time now. Like you've been in and out. Mm -hmm. you've, you've had plenty of experience with like competitive formats, casual formats. What is your opinion on the current meta right now? Like what, like the current format that's out, like, what, what is your opinion on that? Do you think it needs to be like changed? Do you think something new needs to happen? Because right now, I mean, you got Prank Kids, Drytron, and uh, Tri Brigade. This topic left and right. Mm -hmm. Like, what? Dragon do you think, Link. Yeah, do, like, do, do, do you think uh, it's balanced? Do you think it's a balanced format? I mean, there's a lot of decks that, you know, there's, I don't know, five or six decks that you can play. So that's. Some would say that's kind of versatile, but uh, I want I want to see some new decks rise to the occasion. And I think Konami needs to ban more cards <laughs> <laughs> or limit some cards. Absolutely. So just starting some controversy here, man. What what are the top three cards you think need to be hit on the ban list? Either <laughs> limited, semi limited, or just all out ban. Give me a quick rundown. What what you thinking? Because I know what card I would like to see banned, but it's not going to happen. Um, For any of you that don't know this already, uh, I I would love to see Dragoon banned, but it's not going to happen. <laughs> it's not. I know it, it, it's not. If, I'm dealing with it. If but. anything, they'd ban like Red Eyes Fusion, if anything. But see, like, I would hate for them to ban Red Eyes Fusion strictly because, yeah. like, it is vers like it is useful in other decks. There are other red eyes fusion monsters that can utilize it. Mm -hmm. However, it is busted because of Dragoon. Yeah. I think uh Tri Brigade definitely needs to be hit. I don't know what they would hit on it though. Um, probably like Fractail or one of the Link monsters. Uh or the trap card. Trap card Revolt. Uh, revolt, yeah. We'll limit revolt to one. Eldritch, probably like Golden Land or probably Eldritch himself. I don't know. <laughs> oh man, Dragon Link still bumping. I wish that deck would die. That's the craziest thing, though. Like, I will, I give respect to Dragon Link players because no matter what Konami hits in their deck, they find a way to still run it. Yeah. Like they are persistent. I mean, it's one of the most uh, supported types out there so there will probably always be dragon link decks <laughs> out there absolutely like i i agree with that like because i legit when i heard, after this last ban list I, I i saw that you know Sh striker was at one and what was it lp just completely got hit mm -hmm. and i was like oh man that's that's gonna that's gonna hurt some people that's gonna hurt some folks dragon link's about to slow down and it didn't. Not even for a second no. did Dragon Link slow down at all. And that's that's just mind blowing to me. Which also, by the way, I will have a budget Dragon Link deck coming your way. So if you are interested in playing Dragon Link at a uh, budget friendly price, 
That should be coming soon. Ooh. Ooh. Pro tip. It doesn't have Chaos Dragon. It doesn't. It I I I'm sorry to all of you out there who do run Dragon Link and see this and like, oh you, you gotta have Chaos Dragon. I I, I don't have it. I can't afford it. <laughs> if you want it, that's why it's a budget deck. But alrighty guys. That's going to be the end of this draw for turn episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. If there's anybody that you would like to, if there's anybody that you would like for me to reach out to for an interview, let me know in the comments below. Um, if, if there's somebody that you would like to see uh, on the podcast, go ahead, shoot them, the, shoot them this video, shoot them the series. Say, hey, uh, I would like to know your Yu-Gi-Oh story. This guy's asking questions. Maybe you can answer a few of them. I don't know. Uh, I will like to say in the comment section below as well, drop one of your favorite Yu-Gi-Oh memories. How did you discover Yu-Gi-Oh? How did you How did you start playing? You got any last words, bud? This was fun. Thank you for having me here. Absolutely, man. Thank you for Thank you for taking the time and joining me here on the podcast. No problem. But, anyways, guys, we are going to move on into end phase. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next one. Bye!